All right, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna be installing Artix Linux in this video. I actually, I'm gonna install it here on my desktop. I have a little uh, solid state drive I have pulled out. Um, so this is gonna be Artix Linux installation. It's gonna be 95% the same as an Arch Linux installation. In fact, you could probably just watch this video for that. Uh, I'm specifically going to be installing for a UEFI system, but uh, I think the differences between installing for a UEFI and a tr legacy BIOS system are pretty much, they're pretty close nowadays. Um, now anyway, I, I'm at artixlinux.org. If you want to follow along, if you want to install this yourself, you can of course go to downloads. And um, now of course I am going to be using the base install. I'm going to be installing it from the bottom up. So that's going to be pretty similar to an Arch Linux installation. But of course, again, if you just want to try Artix, you could just download it with a desktop environment pre-installed and it'll have an auto installer. Uh, so if you want Cinnamon, XFCE, Plasma, you know, whatever you want. Uh, I think they had an announcement on their main page that they now have i3 and GNOME ISOs or something like that. So you have a lot of choices, but I am going to be installing uh, the base install. I'm going to be installing Runit, okay? And again, they, Artix has three different choices for init systems. You have OpenRC, Runit, and S6. Um, the installation is going to be identical for all of them, except for like one or two commands. Uh, it's just like what you install and what you do to activate services. So I will make notes of all that kind of stuff if you want to follow, around, follow along on OpenRC. Um, now, they do have an installation guide on the Artix wiki. Um, you can check it. I, I'm not really going to... Hopefully, I'll be able to do this from memory, but... Uh, you know, uh, I might refer to this. Um, I'll also say, so anyway, go ahead and download the ISO if you haven't already. And usually you'll want to put it on like a USB drive. So I'm going to, well, I'll go over to another workspace. Um, now, if I run LSBLK before I put in my USB drive, you should see I have uh, two hard drives here. Let me actually put this in. Okay, so you see I have SDA, that's my main hard drive, and SDB, that is my media hard drive. If I rerun it, once I put in the USB, you'll see that SDC is my USB drive, so, you know, 7.5 gigs. So its file location is going to be slash dev slash SDC, okay? Um, now, if you want to go ahead and put that ISO on the USB drive, I've already done this, and I'm actually going to be doing the install a little differently, but if you want to put the... Um, ISO on that thing, you can just say DD and give it an input file that is your ISO. I have my ISO right here in my home directory. Uh, and give it the output file, dev, SD, whatever it is. Um, you got to be careful with this. Obviously, you don't want to run it on the wrong uh, thing. You just want to create a bootable USB. You don't want to overwrite your system. So make sure, make, make absolutely sure that it is the hard drive you want. And you can also give it, you know, status equals progress or something like that if you want to see. Uh, and anyway, run this and it'll take a little bit of time, but that'll give you what you want, a bootable USB. Again, I already have it. But um, now once you have that, you can just plug it in your computer, uh, reboot, press usually F10 or F2 or your ThinkPad button or whatever, and it'll give you a, a BIOS menu and you can choose to boot from the USB. And then you can be in installation. Now I'm gonna be doing things a little differently. Again, I'm just installing it on this hard drive here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this hard drive in. And you can, in Artix, you, uh, well, this is the same thing as Arch. You can actually install these uh, packages, or, um, like for example, Artix, Let's see what it's called, Artix Live Base. Uh, and this just gives you, it installs on your computer all the install scripts that they use to, you know, like base strap, like which is their equivalent of pack strap and stuff like that. Uh, so now I can actually just treat, oh, in a second, a load. It always takes a second for this solid state drive to load sometimes. I'm not quite sure why. I think it's the connector, but okay, yeah, there it is. Um, so I'm just going to pretend that I have booted into my live environment because I already have the scripts for doing that. And I'm going to go ahead and start uh, installing this on this, uh, you know, uh, this new hard drive. So anyway, the th once you boot up onto Artix Linux using your USB drive, you log in with the username root and the password Artix. Uh, or you could log in as the Artix user and then, you know, uh, sudo su or whatever. But uh, we're going to start the installation. So the first thing you really want to do is discover if you're running EFI 
or a legacy boot. Okay. Now, basically, most new machines will have a leg or a UEFI. And in order to find out if you have it, just go ls. Try and look at the contents of the following directory. It's sys firmware efi uh, fe vars. Okay. Now. If you see stuff come up, you are using UEFI. If you don't see stuff come up, you are not using UEFI. So just keep that in mind. You're going to have to partition things a little differently if you're using one or the other, and uh, one or two commands are going to be different. Now, I actually do not see anything because I, the computer I'm running on has legacy BIOS, but I'm installing this for a system that does have UEFI, so I'm actually going to run the UEFI installation. But it's, again, only like one command is going to be different. Um, so, first thing you want to make sure is that you do in fact have internet, so just ping a website. Um, I of course already have, you know, I'm on my main computer. Um, I always recommend, in, you know, hooking up an ethernet port. Uh, if you don't have an ethernet port, you can use, what is it, Wi-Fi menu or whatever. I don't think I have Wi-Fi menu installed, um, but that should be, that should come with uh, the Arctic ISO. Uh, it might just be one word, but I don't have it installed on my computer. Um, and that will allow you to pick Wi-Fi, but I highly recommend using uh, Ethernet. So anyway, let's go ahead and start. So you want to figure out which, again, which drive by running LSBLK you want to install on. I'm going to be installing, obviously, on S uh, Dev SDC. So the first thing you can do is actually run FDisk on Dev SDC. Um, now, I'm going to be deleting everything on this hard drive. Um, if you only want to delete a single partition or, or something like that, for example, what I have right here, like this is the um, on my pre-existing installed operating system, which I think is Manjaro. Um, this is the boot partition. Um, this is the root partition. So all the system is installed there. And this is the home partition. I'm going to delete all of this, but if you know what's what, you could only delete the boot and root partitions and install from there or and save the home partition so you don't have to you know back up your files but I'm gonna be deleting everything so once you run F disk on this just press D to delete a partition It'll ask which one I'm gonna say three D again I'm gonna say two D again and now partition one is deleted if you press P at any time it'll list your partitions I don't have any uh, but now we're gonna add some partitions now here's how I'm gonna do it um, it, it's always, especially if you're using UEFI, you have to partition your drive, or at least you have to have a boot partition. Um, some people, in, in other cases, will just use everything in the same partition, but this is this is what I do pretty much all the time now. Um, so first, I'm going to type an in to make a new partition, and the first one I'm going to make is your boot partition. That's always what you want to have first. Um, so partition number, I just press enter. First sector, I'm just going to press enter. Uh, last sector is gonna, you're going to tell it how big you want it to be, and I am just going to say plus one G. I'm going to make it a gigabyte big, uh, and that gives you a little bit more wiggle room. I think the Arcs, uh, the Artix Wiki uh, recommends like maybe half a gig at m or something like that. But you know, I, I like having a little bit more, um, so I'm just going to say one gig, uh, and that's fine. Uh, and it's going to ask you if you already have something pre-installed. It'll ask you to remove the signature. I'm going to say yes. Um, so next, so that's one partition. We can press P to view it. Now next, I'm going to add in two more partitions. The first one's going to be the root partition. Okay, so first sector, press enter. Uh, last sector, you're going to enter the size. So this is going to be how, where all of your system, like, uh, is like the. It's going to be the size of your full system. So you don't want to make it super small. Um, I I would say that. I usually use 30 gigs. Um, I don't know, maybe for this example we'll use, yeah, we'll use 30. Okay, so 30G plus 30G. And um, a lot of distributions, this, one, this is one thing that annoys me about like Ubuntu and some distros that automatically partition your drives. They'll pick way too little space for you to use. Uh, I, I think you need, nowadays you need around 30 or so. So I'm going to say 30 at least, and I'm going to say yes to remove that signature if it asks. Um, and um, yeah, because there are some distros that auto install like 10 gigs or something like that. Like if, especially if you're uh, updating your packages and you have a bunch of a big package cache that you want to keep, um, you know, you, or if, even if you just have a, a lot of programs installed, you, you want some room anyway. So that's our root partition. And now I'm going to make a home partition. Uh, number three, just press enter. First sector, just press enter. And last sector, you can just press enter and it will automatically fill up the rest of the space. 
remove that signature and partition it again or press P to print it. Um, and it says, okay, if we save this, the partitions will be wiped. That's what we want. I'm going to say W to wipe them. And of course, make sure that you're doing this on the right partition. You're not like accidentally doing the, uh, you know, your media direct, your media, uh, uh, external drive or something like that or some hard drive you don't want to be doing it on but I am sure that SDC is what I want I'm gonna press W to write so it leaves S F disk and now we're back in the shell um, so now we should um, see uh, oops I mean if we run LSBLK we should see uh, okay yeah so we have all this of course I formatted it exactly how I formatted it before but I wanted to show you you know just in case so the next thing you want to do is start putting file systems on these partitions so we can put files on them so I'll start with the uh, command mkfs uh, ext4 we're gonna make an ext4 partition on dev sd C3. Okay. Now, the, this is an important thing. I'm going to format the root and home partitions in uh, ext4. That's nor ext4 is usually what you partition Linux part or the file system you put on Linux partitions. Um, but if you are using UEFI, if when you ran that ls command you saw a bunch of stuff, you are going to want to use a fat partition for the boot partition. Uh, if you're using legacy BIOS, you can run this command on sdc1. Uh, or whatever your, your partition is, but I'm gonna run this for, um, should have started running this because this will take a little bit of time. Um, but, but basically, uh, in UEFI systems, you have to have a FAT system on your, uh, your uh, file system on your boot partition, um, but legacy BIOS just make everything ext4. And this might take a second, so I might have to wait. Okay, so home partition's done, so now I'm gonna run, I'm gonna make an ext4, uh, uh, partition on the uh, the root partition which is SDC2 this will take less time because it's smaller and now if you are again if you're running legacy boot just run that command on SDC1 but if you're running uh, if you're uh, using UEFI you want to say MKF uh, FS fat and then say F32 and so that will install a fat partition on this last one. Okay, so now we have all our partitions, we have file systems on them. Um, now what we basically, all you do now, you mount them in the way that you want and you install the operating system, which is just one command. And then you will make a couple changes after that and we'll be done. Okay, that's basically all it is. So now what I'm gonna do is you're gonna take your root partition. In our case, it's the second one. And I'm gonna mount that to dev sd. Uh, well, no, I'm going to mount dev sdc2 to mnt, or you could actually mount it wherever, uh, but, you know, we're I'm going to be doing everything at mnt, okay? Well, don't m mount it wherever, mount it in an empty directory, but... So once you've done that, we're going to make some directories in that mounting directory, one for home and one for boot, and now that we've done that, we can mount the other two drives, so let's mount the boot drive, which is the partition number one, mount it... Uh, in boot and we will mount the home partition and mount home okay so once we've done that we now see if we run lsblk we will have everything mounted where it's supposed to be okay so that's great so now we the command you use to install the operating system is base strap so this is the same thing on arch linux on arch linux they call it uh, pack strap but same concept and so here's what you do. You tell it where to install the operating system. In this case, it's wherever we mounted it. Uh, we, of course, did it in MNT. Um, and then you're going to tell it what to install. You are definitely going to want base. You are basically definitely going to want base devel. Uh, that gives you sudo and a bunch of other basic stuff. Um, now, I am going to be installing for run it. So I'm going to say, you have to say run it and e login d run it. Um, now, I will say if we go to the installation page, uh, let's see, ins uh, wait, not configure the base system, install a base system, they will tell you the different commands you need to run. Again, if you're running just, if you want to install Artix with OpenRC, you just run, you install OpenRC. If you want to install run it, you got to install those two packages that I just wrote out. And S6, you got to install S6 and eLogND S6. Okay, um, so that's all you got to do. Um, additionally, you're going to want to, I think they put Linux in, or no, they don't put Linux here. Uh, they install it later on, but we can install it in one command. So we can say Linux, and you will nearly, well, not nearly, certainly, uh, but you'll probably want Linux firmware 
Um, that's if you want to, if you have like proprietary uh, a Wi-Fi driver that you need or something like that. This gives you some proprietary drivers. And you could also just install any other program that you want to install right here. I'm going to want Vim, for example, so I might as well put that in. There are a couple other programs we'll install once we we're in the system, but um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and run this. This will actually take a little bit. It'll download all the programs, oh, excuse me, and uh, run them all um, and, or not run them all, but install them all. So I, I'm going to stop the video for a second and I'll come back when it's done. All right, I was off cleaning my kitchen. Looks like everything is done now. So basically now we have an operating system installed. We just can't boot to it, so we have to set up our bootloader and there are a couple other settings we need to set. Now one of the big, the main things is when our computer boots up, we need to tell it, right? So we've mounted these uh, partitions like this. We need to tell it to remount those in the correct position. You know, we need to put the home partition in home and the boot partition in boot. Uh, when it reboots. So the command you use for that is um, fs tab uh, gen. Now on if you're installing Arch Linux, it's gen fs tab. They renamed it for whatever reason on Artix. Uh, but basically if you run that command uh, and give it a location, okay, it's going to generate an fs tab file, which basically is a file that, uh, you know, tells you how to mount everything when you start up. Um, anyway, we want to give this command some a uh, couple options. Uh, one of the big ones is capital U. Uh, this uses instead of like the uh, device assigned numbers, uh, it uses its UUID, which, uh, you know, basically sometimes if you start up your computer, it might assign a different drive to SDA or something like that. Uh, so we want to run this with U. Uh, so we use the, I mean, obviously these are not going to be SDC when we boot them up on another computer. Uh, so you definitely want to have the U option. And we're going to put that in, um, or actually we'll uh, pin it to mount Etsy FS tab, okay? So that is inside of our partition. Now it's gonna read that file and, and start everything up uh, when it uh, begins. Uh, so I should say, I, I meant to do this beforehand, um, but you should, or at least note it beforehand. Um, you are gonna want to, uh, you might wanna change your mirror. Uh, so if you go to Pacman, D mirror, actually let's do this on the main machine because obviously if we're in the, the uh, ISO, it's not gonna make a difference, but let's, so now that we have FS tab generated, what we wanna do is run art tools cheroot, and this is just like uh, arch cheroot or whatever uh, on arch. And basically we will run it on MNT and this will put us into this, uh, you know, now we are not running my laptop here, we're actually running the installed operating system we just installed. Um, actually, I'm in here, it looks like I'm just in shell. I wanna be bash just so I have, you know, bash features and stuff like that, so I'm gonna run bash. Um, okay, so there are a couple things to do now. Uh, let's, actually, let's do what I said just a second ago. So you're going to want to edit uh, Etsy, wait, what did I say? Oh yeah, um, mirror or Pacman D mirror list okay now you can i'm editing in vim I, if you don't know what how to use vim use nano um, but i'm going to edit this file and this actually lists out some artix mirrors like uh you know with different locations and stuff um you might want to change some stuff around in here you might want to move uh for example this one obviously has us in it so it's probably in us so i'll move it up there or something like that um so this is the file that uh basically you want to have uh, mirrors that are close to you physically, so like Tsinghua University is obviously not close, so you know, I might want to move that to the bottom. Um, this of course is not mandatory, but you'll get slightly quicker speeds when you're, uh, you know, updating stuff. Um, I should have noted that before we ran a base strap because it'll make the install a little faster, but you know, it's, it's not a big issue. Again, it's just like a time thing. Um, okay, so one thing we want to do is we want to uh, set our time zone. So uh, run, we're gonna make a symbolic link in from uh, user share zone info, and you're gonna pick your time zone. I'm gonna say America, New York, okay? And uh, you're gonna put that in slash Etsy local time, okay? So that means if I run local time, uh, it will loot, it will link right to that time zone. So that basically tells you where you, uh, your system where you are. Um, and you might actually want to uh, update the hardware clock, or at least uh, sys 
two hardware clock. Um, that's just to make sure that your system is going off of your computer's timer. Um, okay, so what else? Uh, locale.gen. I had to write this one down because I always forget locale and stuff like that. Uh, but open up uh, this file, etsy.locale.gen, and this lists out all the different uh, localizations or whatever. And you want to find the one that corresponds to, you know, that you want. So in my case, it's English, US, and I'm going to uncomment both of these. And once you do that, you're going to run locale, save the file and run locale gen. Uh, and that'll take a second. It's taking longer than I expected it to. Uh, and now you're going to want to open up, uh, what is it? Uh, no, you're going to want to do, well, yeah, we'll open up Etsy locale.conf. This should be a new file that you're creating. And you're going to manually set in here, you're going to say this. You're going to say lang equals whatever your language is. In my case, it's going to be e, en underscore us dot utf hyphen eight. I think when I did my Arch Linux video, I got this wrong because I put like a dot for eight. Well, actually, let me see in my notes. Okay. Under en underscore us dot uft hyphen eight. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. So we're going to run that and that should be good. Um, now another thing, there are a couple other packages I want to install. So I installed, um, well actually I'll, I'll just install two right now. One is going to be Network Manager and this is to, so to be clear, right now we have an internet connection. Okay, if I, if I ping a website, okay, we have an internet connection. But that actually is from, that's not in our, our operating system where we've installed. That's like from, it's basically getting that from your computer already. Uh, so you wanna be able to tell, you wanna tell Artix that you wanna start, you know, that you wanna start the Wi-Fi manager at the, whenever you actually boot up. So we're gonna install Network Manager. Now you could use, there are minimaler uh, ways of doing this, but I, I always just recommend use, using Network Manager. And if you are, uh, running run it. You're gonna also install network manager hyphen run it. I think that's the name of the package. Yes, it is um, And if you're installing s6, it's gonna be network manager hyphen s6 and I think there's also another version for OpenRC. Um, so to be clear network manager is going to let you I mean if we enable this service It's going to let you uh, you know, uh, what was I saying? Um, <clears throat> automatically start the internet whenever you boot up, okay? Um, and the run it file, this is just specific to run it. Again, run it is the thing that's gonna be starting all system services. So we need this file to actually tell it what to do. Uh, so this will take just a second and I'll come back and when it's done. Okay, now that's done. The next little step is gonna be different if you're using run it or OpenRC or S6. Uh, we wanna tell Artix to start network manager whenever we boot up, okay? So if you go to the uh, installation page, it should say, they should give you an example of this. Okay, so yeah, here's an example of um, ba basically, well, I'll just run the run it command first. Um, now, normally, if you wanna tell Artix to automatically start a service when you boot up, you tell it to do this. You say, Etsy run it SV, and in this folder, you'll see all the things that it can auto start. So we wanna start network manager. And so normally you're gonna link that to run slash run it slash service. Now if you run this right now, this is once you get your you know computer all started up and stuff like that on run it, this is the command that's gonna work. But if I run this now, it's not gonna work right now because technically this directory has not been mounted because we're not at we haven't actually booted up in the machine. So in the environment in our current environment, the command is gonna be a little different. You're gonna link this to Etsy run it, I gotta look, run uh, SV deer, and then current, okay? So this will auto start network manager. Um, now normally when you're, once we boot into this computer, you're gonna run a command like this to auto start something on run it, just link uh, its service here to run slash run it slash service and that's it. Um, now, if you're running OpenRC or S6, you have slightly different commands. So for example, in OpenRC, it'd be RC update add network manager. And I think N and M will be capital in that case. Um, and S6, they have commands for that as well. That is how you auto start a service. So now, when once we boot up in this computer, again, we haven't set up bootloading yet, uh, but once we set up Grub and all that stuff, when we boot into this computer, the network manager should be running by default. So if we're connected to the ethernet or something, we'll have internet. Okay. All right, so a couple last things. 
Let's go to uh, let's edit the file etsy slash hostname. Uh, this should this file should not exist already. Um, so I'm going to name this computer desktop, okay? Because that's going to be my desktop. Um, and additionally, you're going to want to go to etsy slash hosts. This file should exist already. And uh, you know, people will type different things in here, but here are the typical defaults. Um, you're going to list your you're going to take the typical uh, you know. IPv4 local address and say localhost. Uh, you're going to say that localhost. That's the IPv6 uh, default. And then you're going to usually, this is what the wiki tells you to do. You do uh, 127.0.0.1, and that is going to go to uh, whatever you name your computer, dot local domain, and repeat that name again. Okay. Um, but uh, you, people do different things in this file, but you can just do that because that's what the wiki says. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our machine bootable so we can actually, you know, start it up on its own computer. Um, I'm going to install some other programs. Again, you could have installed these when you originally ran Basestrap, but I guess for illustrative purposes, I'm, I'm dragging it out. You're going to want to install Grub. Uh, if you have if you're going to dual boot or if you want to later install some other operating system, you'll also want to install OS Prober. I'm not going to be installing this because I, I don't need it, but that's usually what you need if you're setting up a, a dual boot thing. And if you're running UEFI, again, if you ran that command at the very beginning, that ls command where you looked at your fevars directory, you are going to want to install fe boot manager. Okay. Um, so this should not take too much time to download. Um, but uh, so if you're just if you're just using traditional boot, you just need Grub. If you're using UEFI, you need FE Boot Manager. And remember, uh, if we're using UEFI, we also created a fat partition. Whereas you don't have to create a fat partition. I mean, for the boot drive or whatever. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll stop this and come back in a second. All right, so now we have our bootloader installed, or well, really we have Grub and all that installed. We have to actually install. I don't know, we have to set it up. So here's what you're gonna do. This command is gonna be different if you're running UEFI versus legacy boot. If you're running legacy boot, and again, if if you ran that ls command on fevars and you didn't get anything, uh, you're running legacy boot. So you're gonna wanna say target equals uh, 386, 386, gotta actually type it right, pc, and then you run that on your, uh, the, the whatever drive that you're installing this on. Um, uh, in our case, it was dev SDC. It might be dev SDA. Again, check with lsblk to see what it is. But you're going to run that command. Um, we are installing for a UEFI system, so we're going to run. That means we did have those FE vars at the beginning, or at least I would have if I was actually running on the machine I'm installing this for. So we're going to say grub install target equals x86 uh, underscore 6 for hyphen EFI, okay? And we're gonna give it an FE directory, directory equals slash boot. And we're gonna say our bootloader is, uh, or bootloader ID equals grub. I think that has to be capitalized. Okay, so let's run that. That'll take just a second, I think. Uh, FE variables are not supported on the system. Okay, yeah, it's no, it's no problem, it's just what I thought. You can't actually install a UEFI bootloader if you're on a legacy BIOS machine. So I actually just took, my, uh, took it off, went to my desktop computer, ran this command, came back here. I actually did a lot of chores. I've been cleaning my house today. Uh, but I came back here, and so now consider this command run, uh, already run for you. Um, so uh, that will actually set up uh, everything we need, except for we need to make a grub config. So we want to say grub make config. By default, this command will just output stuff to the terminal. So we want to put it in a particular file. We want it in boot slash grub slash grub cfg. Uh, so that will generate your grub configuration file and you'll be able to boot. Now there's one last thing I have not done and that is set a password. So let's set a password with passwd um, and I will give it a nice little password here. Um, I think Arch Linux, you don't actually need to set a root password. It'll still let you log in, but Artix does not let you do that. Um, so you do have to set a password. Well, you should probably do, well, you should definitely set it for Arch anyway. Just set it for something. So we have our root account. 
Uh, we should be able to plug this up. It will boot. It will have network connection. And of course, it's just going to be a plain operating system, but then you can start installing whatever you want. And well, that's for another video, but let's go check it out right now. Just to verify that it works, you can see that our hard drive is attached. Barely. It is there. It's plugged up. Uh, and I have logged in on the system here. You can see I've logged in as root and I have pinged my own website. Notice that sometimes on Artix, uh, depending on what services you have started, you might get like some kind of output or something right before um, the login, but you can still log in and I put in my password, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically, you now have Artix installed, the uh, a minimal install. The next place to go from here is to install a graphical environment. I might do another video on this. I have done a video on the past. I'll link that one. Um, and if, if not, I'll be doing a video on this pretty quickly, but basically you just install some kind of desktop environment or window manager, tell Artix to start it, and then that's it. And you're taken care of. Same thing on Arch, same thing on any other Linux distribution. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, see you guys next time. Now I have my desktop back.